What's up everyone, Pritch here, bringing you a guide on everything Rapier and New World. First, we're going to go over basic and heavy attacks. Second, we're going to go over all the weapon abilities, upgrades, and passives that can be specced into for both the Blood and Grace trait lines. And then finally, we're going to cover potential builds and fun weapon combos to try out. Let's run it. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the biggest damage and PvP powerhouse weapon in New World, the Rapier. The Rapier scales off dexterity, so the more damage you want to do, the more dexterous you gotta spec. The Rapier's secondary scaling is off intelligence, and we're gonna get more into this with builds. Beginning with your light attack combo, the Rapier has a 4 auto attack chain. Lunge forward with a thrust, then do 2 quick side swipes, and finally finish it off with another lunge. The first and last attack each do 100% weapon damage, while the two quick middle swipes each deal 66% weapon damage. The Rapier has extremely fast attack patterns and begins with these light attacks. You can get off the first three attacks in the time it normally takes another weapon to do one attack. For the heavy attack, bring your blade in close, then lunge out to poke whatever's in front of you for 133% weapon damage. This might be one of the lowest heavy coefficients in the game, but it's also very spammable and quick compared to other weapons. You also lean back in a really weird way, like you're trying to matrix some bullets while thrusting. Last note, you move your target back a lot when you strike, and depending on where you stand, this might put them out of range of your light attacks, so just be careful. Auto's done, let's move on to the trait line that wants to just pump out huge DPS numbers and cause death by a thousand cuts. Blood. The first weapon ability is Tondo. Slash red and hit foes for damage while applying a 12 second bleed that will deal 100% weapon damage over 12 seconds. This bleed stacks up to 3 times and each new application of bleed refreshes the other stack's cooldowns and this all sits on a 10.5 second cooldown. I honestly have two problems with this tooltip. First, it doesn't tell you the range of the slash, and second, it doesn't tell you the coefficient for the strike damage. We'll hit the range in later upgrades, but basically it's around 5 or 6 meters. The initial strike damage is about 50% weapon damage, and I honestly don't know why that's not included. This ability is really quick, and you can stack a lot of bleeds together for Kani damage, but each tick only does 8.5% of your weapon damage, which is basically nothing. We're going to get into using this for damage modifiers or boosting other abilities, but on its own, Tondo doesn't do a ton of damage. The first upgrade is Thirst for Blood. Every time you hit an opponent that doesn't currently have a Tondo bleed stack, this cooldown is reduced by 10%, which basically puts it on a 9 second cooldown. The second upgrade is And Again. If Tondo only hits one target, even if that target is blocking, the cooldown is reduced by 25%, which basically puts it on an 8 second cooldown. The final upgrade is Proper Spacing. The initial direct damage is increased by 100% if you're 4 meters or farther from your target. I tested with Mike and when standing barely over 6 meters, I didn't hit him with Tondo, so it appears you gotta be over 4 meters but under 6 meters to take advantage of this. Also, 100% sounds like a huge boost, but remember the initial direct damage was only 50% weapon damage. So double that is supposed to equal 100% weapon damage, which is the same damage as if you did one light attack thrust. So in other words, you have a 2 meter range where you get to do the same damage as your basic attack, plus a 12 second bleed worth a total of another light attack thrust. On its own, Tondo is very unimpressive, but other specs and abilities will take advantage of the bleeds, which increases its value. The next weapon ability is Flurry. Dash forward doing 5 quick thrusts and each hit deals more damage than the previous so your damage ramps up. This sits on a 15.3 second cooldown and oh my gosh you can dodge cancel it. For those that didn't play in the beta, most weapon abilities cannot be dodge cancelled and most attack animations cannot be dodge cancelled which means that when you commit to pressing something you are stuck in that animation until it ends. This is a very big deal and extremely valuable. These strikes occur extremely quickly and most weapons can't get two attacks off in the time it takes you to complete all five of your strikes. So basically, this ability, real strong. I don't know who was smoking what when these tooltips were made on blood, but this also doesn't tell you how much damage each thrust does. I went back and compared the light attack combo numbers with the flurry numbers on the not green dummy and remember that the initial light attack does 100% weapon damage. Using this as my gauge, I hit the gray dummy for 134 with the initial light attack. My flurry numbers were 62, 69, 75, 81, and 110. So the damage of each flurry strike is roughly 46%, 51%, 
56%, 60%, and 82% weapon damage. These numbers are pretty small, but in total, you do roughly 295% weapon damage in about 2 seconds, and each hit counts as a light attack, proccing passives and damage bonuses that we'll get into later. This ability slaps really hard and fast, and I just want to warn you, you do a tiny dash forward to open, so give yourself a little space between you and your target for easy hits. The first upgrade is Overwhelm. Each hit does 25% more block damage. This difference makes it so that you can fully break a stamina bar blocking your hits, which is really powerful. The second upgrade is Fletching Strikes. Each hit reduces the cooldown by 7%. 7 times 5 equals a 35% cooldown reduction, putting the cooldown at 10 seconds. But this cooldown begins at the onset of pressing the ability, and since the ability takes 2 seconds, the time between recasts is only 8 seconds. Having your hardest hitting ability on an 8 second cooldown is insane. To the bone, each hit of flurry extends the rapier bleeds by 1 second. This also applies to future stack applications of the same bleed, extending the entire stack. I'm going to play the audio of me and Mike testing this out and then explain what's actually going on and why this tooltip is wrong or the upgrade is bugged. Okay, and now what happens with this? Are they both 12? Oh, that was 17 now. Really? Now they're both 17? Well, it it's the same debuff, it just has times 2. So now it has times 3, but that refreshed it again for 17 seconds. And what about now? That didn't do anything. So it just didn't do a thing? Nope. Now I'm at times three for 20. Oh my gosh. All right, let's break it down. Rapier bleeds can only come from using Tondo, and Tondo can stack up to three times. Tondo's initial bleed ticks last for 12 seconds. If the tooltip was correct, each strike of flurry would add one second to both the current bleed tick timer and the overall total bleed tick timer for when Tondo is reapplied. But in reality, only the overall total bleed tick timer was being increased. Flurry strikes five times, so it should add five seconds to any current bleed ticks and any future bleed tick durations. Let's say, for example, Mike had two bleed stacks on him, and the timer left was five seconds when I hit him with flurry. According to the tooltip, those bleed stacks should then go up to 10 seconds, and any reapplication should begin at 17 seconds. In reality, the bleed stacks did not increase to 10 seconds, but when I reapplied the tondo, the reapplication did begin at 17. Again, I don't know if this is a bug or intended or what's up, but just understand that currently, Flurry does not increase the timer on current bleed ticks, only future reapplications. Also, the bleed ticks have a maximum duration of 20 seconds, so you aren't ever getting past that. Hopefully that all made sense, and if it doesn't, please ask in the comments and I'll try to explain it however I can. Finalize is the final upgrade, which causes the final hit of Flurry to stagger. You can think of Stagger as a mini interrupt. The last ability is actually two abilities in one, and you guessed it, more lazy writing. Flourish and Finish. Flourish is the sweeping attack that knocks enemies back and you can press your light attack to perform Finish after Flourish, which is a lunge attack that consumes all rapier bleeds on target's hit, dealing 110% damage per bleed immediately. This all sits on a 19.1 second cooldown, and what isn't in the tooltip is 1. How much damage Flourish does, and 2. How many meters is Finish's lunge. Using the same not green test dummy strat, the Flourish knockback ability is around 90% weapon damage. And just using my eyes, I'd guesstimate that the lunge is around 5 meters, but I honestly never really tested the distance because I'm only human. Please love me. So we've made it to the big wombo combo, where you do big damage on creatures with a ton of rapier bleeds. Except for the part where you really only do 30% more weapon damage, which is less than half the damage of one of your middle swipes. In defense of the ability, you get the damage instantly instead of over 12 seconds. Let's talk about the finish damage on bleeds. It's proportional to the total amount of damage left on the current bleed stacks. For example, let's say Mike has two bleed stacks on him, and the bleed ticks do 20 damage per tick. In example A, Michael has 10 seconds left on the bleed stacks when I hit him with finish. And in example B, Michael has 20 seconds left on the bleed stacks when I hit him with finish. 
In A, you take the 10 seconds multiplied by the damage per tick for a total of 200 damage. 200 times 110% equals 220 damage per bleed stack. Since there are two bleed stacks, it's a total of 440 damage off executing the bleeds. In B, you take the 20 seconds multiplied by the damage per tick for a total of 400 damage. 400 times 110% equals 440 damage per bleed stack. Since there are two bleed stacks, it's a total of 880 damage off executing the bleeds. So the more damage you want to do, the higher duration bleed stacks you want to execute. Now that's the damage on executing bleeds. But what about the actual strike damage of landing finish? Because bleeds or no bleeds, you're still going to do damage. But once again, the tooltip is silent. Using the green dummy this time, I was able to determine that the strike damage of finish is around 120% weapon damage. Be careful with finish though, because your rapier is super thin, and it's actually really easy to miss your lunge since you just knocked back your enemy, and have to aim that dash at where they're going to land. I'm just saying, if I could miss a big green man with no one around me, you could probably miss at some point too. The first upgrade is with flare. Gain grit on both flourish and finish. Grit makes you glow white and you can't be staggered. The second upgrade is swagger. Gain 20 stamina when hitting something with finish. You have so much stamina regen in this game that gaining 20 stamina here is pretty worthless in my opinion. Fuel. Each Tondo bleed tick reduces this cooldown by 3.5%, meaning you reduce this cooldown by 10.5% each second when three Tondo bleeds are on a target. TLDR, you can cast this ability every 6.5 seconds if one target had three bleeds. The problem is you want the target to have bleed ticks to take advantage of this, but if the target has bleed ticks, you can't pop finish. I played around with the idea of only using flourish and never using finish so I could just spam the knockback, but the damage sitting around 90% just isn't worth it at all to spam because it's less than your basic attacks. And with that, the weapon abilities are finally done. On to the short list of passives. First, refreshing strikes. Reduce your cooldowns by 1% on any hit. You are all about quick hits with the rapier, so this is always a solid passive working in the background for you. On guard, do 10% more damage to enemies over 50% health. Unerring, gain a 5% DPS boost versus targets with rapier bleeds. Light edge, increase damage from both middle swipe attacks by 8%. These middle swipes used to do 66% weapon damage and this bumps it up to around 71%. Since you weave these middle attacks into your rotations a lot, it's a really solid little DPS boost. The final passive is heavy puncture and it's going to sound super familiar to the flurry upgrade to the bone. Heavy attacks extend rapier bleeds by 2 seconds and will also extend future stacked applications which extends the entire stack. This tooltip provides the exact same lie as before in application. I'll let you hear Mike's countdown of the timer for you real fast. Count down for me right now. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Interesting. Eight, seven, twenty, nineteen. Interesting. So the heavy attacks are adding to the total, but they're not reapplying. Yeah, but they're not. But they're not adding. They're not to... adding to the active ability. Yeah. As with to the bone, heavy attacks only extend future application bleed durations and do not extend current bleed stack applications. As before, I don't know which is intended by the devs at Amazon, so just keep your eyes peeled. This brings us to the elite, Bloody End. Finish now deals 150% damage of Rapier's bleed damage. This means that with three stacks of bleed application, you will do 150% more damage and it will be an instant proc on finish. This has some potential with large monsters and expeditions or bosses in open world dungeons, but most normal adds will be dead long before you ever reach three stacks of bleed. And that's gonna round out the blood tree. To recap, shocker, you make people bleed. You have an incredible amount of cooldown reductions to spam abilities, and your elite is the hardest hitting single attack in the game when procced on three bleed stacks. All right, everybody, mid-round break, and I don't know about you guys, but my allergies are kind of kicking my butt, so I apologize if I sound a little nasally. But if you guys are enjoying the content, enjoying the video, maybe consider dropping a like, maybe consider hitting that sub button, and you can also comment down below. All those are free ways to help me out if you're enjoying my content. All right, let's move on to the grace tree. Moving on to the PvP powerhouse trait line that turns you into a blur of motion and pain, grace. 
The first weapon ability is Evade, which might be the most complicated, simple ability in the game. Perform a tiny directional dash that cancels any activity and provides brief invulnerability while sitting on a 5.7 second cooldown. Light attacks during Evade occur much faster, and this ability will be the reason that, in theory, a perfect Rapier player should always beat a non-Rapier player in duels. But I'm going to hit on this after the upgrades. The first upgrade is Breathe In. Gain 20 stamina on use, and normally I'd say 20 stamina is pretty useless, but you're going to be spamming this ability so hard while also utilizing dodge rolls for incredible invulnerability uptime that here, it honestly actually feels really good. The second upgrade is Allegra. I, I mean Allegro. Gain 20% move speed for 3 seconds, and this again is the exception to my normal rule. Normally, I complain that 3 seconds doesn't feel very impactful, but you're going to be spamming this ability so hard that you can basically have permanent haste while fighting. The third upgrade is Adagio. Hold W key while using Evade, and this gives you a 15% DPS increase on your next light attack for 1 second. So basically just Evade into a light attack to do really good damage. The fourth upgrade is where everything just gets insane. Each light attack reduces this cooldown by 30%. And you can get off three light attacks in about a second, which means that you can essentially evade every two seconds. Yes, you heard me right, you PvP gurus. You have a spammable invulnerability, and if you learn to time those invulns really well, you can win every fight. What I just said is every two seconds, you can iframe, get 20 stamina, get a damage increase, and gain move speed as long as you pump light attacks between hits. And yes, flurry hits count as light attacks, which means that evade into flurry will automatically recharge evade again. Now, for those crapping themselves right now thinking about fighting a rapier player, it is not easy at all to perfectly time those invulnerability frames because it lasts for a very, very short amount of time during the dash. If you hold a rapier and PvP, you have the ability to win every fight if you properly utilize this ability over and over and over again to avoid damage while pumping huge numbers. Just understand that this is way easier said than done and will take a lot of practice. The next weapon ability is the only parry in the game, Repost. Enter a defensive stance for one second, and if you'd be struck during that second, counter the attack with a melee range stun that lasts for 1.5 seconds. You're also invulnerable for about 1.5 seconds after successfully blocking a hit, and this all sits on a 19.1 second cooldown. This ability is also taunt gem compatible, which means that if you put a carnelian gem in your rapier, it'll taunt all foes within 5 meters. I honestly never saw a rapier tank player, but maybe speedrunners want to try it out and just constantly use evade on every attack instead of blocking. To sum this ability up, it's a very simple parry mechanic, time it right to avoid damage and stun your foe. The first upgrade is Insult to Injury. If you trigger Repost, all your attacks become uninterruptible for 3 seconds, which just means that you can't be staggered. Also, yes, it did not get past me that Amazon misspelled the word attack, and I'm curious if one of those many job postings was for a tooltip guy. The second upgrade is Priority, which reduces the cooldown of all your rapier abilities by 20% when landing the stun part of Repost. And no, this does not reduce the cooldown of Repost. The final upgrade is Lasting Consequence. Increase the stun from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds. Quick tidbit about stuns, when something is stunned, they remain stunned for whatever the duration is supposed to be, in this case 2 seconds, or until they're struck with damage. After being struck, they lose the stun and can immediately dodge or run or hit back, so choose your one free hit wisely. The final weapon ability is Fletch. Spin around while dashing 10 meters, dealing 145% weapon damage, and this sits on a 16.3 second cooldown. This dash is probably my favorite dash in the game, as it feels really fluid, you can change the direction of your dash in the middle of it, and you don't become rooted when you land. You kind of keep your momentum for a second and like slide a little bit. The first upgrade is Quick Lunge. Killing something with flesh reduces the cooldown by 80%, which means that by the time you land, you have about 1.5 seconds and then you can just recast it. The second upgrade is Backside. After Fletch, your next crit does 15% more damage, and this bonus only lasts for 5 seconds. Interruption. You can light attack any time during Fletch to stop the dash and perform a light attack doing 115% weapon damage. This is basically the eject button in case you royally screw something up and try dashing to your death. 
On to the passives. Desperation. Deal 10% more damage when your stamina is below 40%. This is going to be a very, very small percent of the time, especially because Evade gives 20 stamina. Controlled Breathing. Gain 3 stamina on any hit, and this is just another reason why you won't be below 40% a ton. Perfectionist. Deal 10% more damage when full health. How long this lasts directly depends on how good you are at evading. Red Curtains. Crits reduce all cooldowns by 5%, and this is just more and more cooldown reduction. Swiftness. Gain 3% haste for 4 seconds on any hit, which can stack 5 times for a 15% haste for 4 seconds. At least, that's how it's supposed to work in theory. In reality, the new application would stack in intensity, but wouldn't reset the 4 second timer, which I'm going to assume is hopefully just a bug. This meant that while your haste would go up to 15%, you would lose the buff after 1 second of not hitting anything. This can also stack with Evade's haste for a total of 35% haste that you can maintain while fighting. Finally, we have the Grace Powerhouse Elite Momentum. Gain 25% DPS on your next light or heavy attack after performing an ability, and this buff lasts for 3 seconds. Every single time you press an ability, like for example, a 2 second evade ability, your next hit does 25% more damage. And remember, evade already has a damage boost of 15% if you evade forward, so basically, every single time that you evade forward, you get a 40% damage boost, which you can spam every 2 seconds. Holy damage! This doesn't even consider other amplifiers such as full health or low stamina. Momentum plus evade is just nutty, and the reason that Rapier has one of the highest solo target DPS in the world. With that, we've finished up the Grace Tree. To recap, you have a spammable invulnerability that also provides stamina and haste and damage. You have the smoothest dash in the game. You have the only parry in the game. And your elite is a spammable damage boost. Congrats everybody, trait lines are done, let's head into some builds. As always, there are a plethora of different ways to play New World that require different builds to focus on different roles, so we're going to start with my recommendations for playing the game Solo Open World, then Partied Open World, then Expeditions, then 1v1 builds, then 50v50 War builds, and then finally, the one build to rule them all for if you want to do everything, but don't want to constantly change your build like me. First up, Solo Open World. Here, I'm valuing big, big damage, mobility, and the beauty of running Evade is that it provides huge damage plus invulnerability. Most classes I recommend dodging or blocking to avoid damage, but for the Rapier, I recommend utilizing Evade as much as humanly possible. I recommend Fletch as a gap closer to help you get around faster and get from add to add quicker. But, if you want another skill that's going to help you out with the fighting of the mobs instead of mobility, you can always take out Fletch and put in Repose for easy add clears. Now, the Rapier does not come with any inherent lifesteal or HP regen, it's just jam-packed with a bunch of damage. So while you'll be killing things really quickly, if you don't time your dodges or your iframes, you're going to take some hits in return, and you're going to want to heal through that with another weapon or food or potions. This leads right into weapon pairings, and you have a ton of options here. The Rapier is a dexterity weapon, so I'll always begin with other dex weapons. First and foremost, the bow or the musket pair really well with the Rapier. Get your enemies low from range, and then finish them off with your high damage once they get into melee range. The bow plus Rapier is the highest single target DPS combo in the game, as long as you're hitting nothing but headshots. Now this is extremely difficult, and the musket has a much easier time hitting those shots, so if you feel yourself struggling with the bow, try the musket and see if those instant shots feel better. Now the rapier has a secondary scaling of intelligence, so another route you can take is to run a full intelligence build with the fire staff or the ice gauntlet. The fire staff has a very large amount of damage, and most of it can be applied in an AoE to help whittle down adds before they get to you. The Ice Gauntlet is more of a controlling style that can still do fantastic damage through the Ice Storm and Pillar, but the Ice Gauntlet is more of that zone controlling play style while the Fire Staff is more of that smacking adds with damage. Or, since you're packing so much damage with the Rape here but no heals, you can always slot a Life Staff in your secondary slot and keep yourself topped off at all times. This will make your life simple as you don't have to rely on potions or food after each encounter that you took some hits. 
You probably have noticed, by the way, that I haven't recommended anything but ranged weapons. That's because the Rapier is very unique due to its high DPS coming from a spammable 2 second ability. This spammable 2 second ability means that the Rapier never has a downtime where all its abilities are on cooldown and you want to weapon swap over to something else. The Rapier is just always up and ready to go and there really isn't a scenario where you want to weapon swap to another melee to try and dish out damage. If you're really really adamant about wanting to run double melee though as Rapier then maybe you could try out the Great Axe as it's best at AoE cleave and has a ton of lifesteal inherent to the kit. This would at least cover the rapier's two downsides of health regen and no cleave. Next you got a couple buddies and you're ready to tackle a turn together. For partied open world I honestly recommend the exact same build. Your job is simple. Damage. Kill everything super fast. Because you do so much damage, you actually have to work hard with your tank because you're going to pull a lot of aggro from adds due to the fact that you'll be generating a lot of threat with your big damage. While you do a lot of damage, you are squishy. Like, really, really squishy. And can die really fast. So understand when you need to run and drop aggro because you're going to be worthless if you're dead. Again, if you feel like you're moving in a group and don't really need added mobility and fletch, feel free to swap that out for a post to help you keep your little skirmishes ending without taking a hit. For weapon pairings, the exact same initial four weapons work fantastic with the rapier. The bow is an excellent ranged weapon with extremely high single target damage for nuking adds. The musket is the all around easier and more reliable headshot hitter for those that don't enjoy the drawing back and leading shots on bow. The Fire Staff is that big magic damage dealer, while the Ice Gauntlet is a nice zoning, controlling, AoE powerhouse. If your group was attempting to kill giant elite mob bosses in open world dungeons and you really, really wanted to play double melee, you can always attempt to use the Hatchet with the Rapier, as I believe the Rapier Hatchet is the highest single target melee DPS build possible. The Hatchet is the strength version of the Rapier with more sustain and survivability, but less overall damage. The Hatchet has secondary scaling on dexterity, however, and still outputs incredible single target damage. This brings us to Expeditions. These are five-man instance dungeons in New World, and you'll be coming in as a hot DPS player. For this content, your number one job is to do as much damage as humanly possible. The end. As such, we don't need Fletch. Instead, we're going to be bringing Tondo and applying bleed stacks that are going to be extended by Flurry. The bleed stacks won't be doing insane damage, but we will be gaining a 5% DPS boost for hitting a target with bleed ticks, and that's going to be a nice little boost for us. We will be taking every passive in the grace tree because remember, in order to activate an elite, you have to have 10 points already placed in that tree. And we really, really want that momentum plus evade combo for constant big DPS. Just stack on the boss's backside and back crit all day. You will be most likely top DPSing with your rapier and expedition groups, but please, for the love of all that's holy, be careful. You are a toothpick, and if you get boss aggro, they are going to snap you in the blink of an eye. And you don't do damage when you're dead. So hit hard, but play smart, and watch AoE cleave attacks. For weapon pairings, this is going to mimic and be identical to the open world pairings. In Expeditions, there's not enough room for three melee DPS players to back crit on a boss without pushing one of the players out of range. As such, to do optimal DPS, at least one of the three DPS players needs to play ranged in boss encounters. If you bring bow, musket, fire staff, or ice gauntlet, you can volunteer to be that ranged player that the team needs. If you really wanted to be all melee, don't bother weapon swapping because I really don't think that anything else can match the DPS of Rapier, but maybe if you were just like adamant about it, try Hatchet with Berserk, I think that'll at least come close. I don't know though, just use the Rapier. PvE done, let's get to the insane 1v1 potential of Rapier. I truly believe this weapon is the best 1v1 weapon in the game currently. This weapon provides the most agency in 1v1s, and by that I mean that you have the biggest arsenal of tricks to pull out during fights. You have a spammable invulnerability, and a ton of stamina regen for even more invulnerability through dodging. This means that if you time your abilities properly and time your dodges properly, you can avoid most, if not all, of your opponent's attacks if you were to play perfect. This gives Rapier players, in my opinion, the highest 1v1 potential and the highest ceiling. 
The ball is in your court to time your dodges and evades. Succeed, and you'll be harder to catch than lightning. Fail, and your squishy butt will be eating a ton of pain really fast. You may have noticed two things. First, I changed the passive from perfectionist to desperation, and that's because you'll be dodging a lot more, and honestly, I don't trust anyone to not get hit. Second, this ability doesn't use repost. You want evade because it's busted. You want flurry because it's your hardest hitting fast damage spike. Finally, you want a gap close for when people try to escape you or play ranged on you. I will recommend, however, that if you fight a double melee opponent, you should swap Fletch for a post as you won't need the gap close, and the block into stun will be a welcome addition. It truly frightens me to think about how good someone could get on Rapier, utilizing evades and pumping huge damage that other classes just can't keep up with. I'll end with this. As a Great Axe Hatchet main, this build with Repost instead of Fletch was the only build that I ever struggled against in 1v1s. Let's talk about fun weapon combos now. As always, the normal four all work very, very well. Bow, Musket, Fire Staff, and Ice Gauntlet can all be very deadly and they each have their own different feeling playstyles. As someone who's fought against all these builds, the Ice Gauntlet for me is the most frustrating to play against as a double melee because you can zone control really well with Ice Storm and Ice Shower. If you wanted to run double melee, then this is actually a situation where the other melee dex weapon, called Spear, is very viable. Rapier is a ton of damage, but it doesn't really do much in the realm of CC. The Spear does okay damage, but you can provide a lot of quick knockdowns and stuns to get some easy chip damage off while your enemies are on the ground. Once you've blown all these abilities on Spear, just hop right back into Rapier for the huge damage and evades. Moving on to the big 50v50 wars. If Rapier was to have a weakness or a worse game mode, it would probably be the fact that it doesn't cleave well in 50v50s, and many times you're going to find yourself using the Rapier as more of a secondary weapon slot. It's still incredibly mobile when used properly, and it thrives in skirmishes into enemy backlines to nuke the enemy ranged players. This makes it ideal for flanking and ganking. Alternatively, you can primarily use a ranged weapon, then weapon swap to the rapier when enemy skirmishers come to your backline to disrupt your team. These will be smaller scaled skirmishes where the rapier can really shine. For weapon pairings, the usual four suspects emerge again. The bow and musket will be high single target DPS and should be used to aim down and destroy enemy turrets. Fire Staff and Ice Gauntlet players should be focusing on big AoE damage on enemy clusters trying to hold or take points. If you really wanted to run double melee again, then I'd recommend the Spear and only playing as a ganking backline player. Avoid those huge clusters at all costs and thin those backlines out. Finally, we've arrived at the one build to rule them all. You love New World and everything it has to offer. You want to run all content and experience everything, but you're lazy like me and don't want to constantly change your build around. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the same build you've been seeing for a while now. No matter what game mode you're experiencing, the Rapier just pumps an incredible amount of damage. Evade plus Momentum is just literally a must-have in all game modes, and Flurry does insane damage really fast. Since you'll be utilizing Evade every 2 seconds and have the ability to dodge roll all the time, you aren't in demand for a Repost stun and can use that slot for mobility instead with Fletch. Fletch is your gap close or escape, and between dodge rolls, evade, haste buffs, and fletch, you can run down any opponent. This is extremely important in PvP, as running no gap close can tend to normally lead to being permanently kited around. For weapon pairings, I gotta recommend either the bow or the ice gauntlet. If you learn to hit shots with the bow, especially headshots, your damage is nutty. You nuke everything in pve or pvp and if you're the superior shot in ranged battles people will charge into your melee range where you can just show them that you're also the superior melee player the ice gauntlet has that controller playstyle where you can be super annoying and hard to reach while chipping away at your enemies this really shines in pvp while kiting people around your ice shower and ice storm but even though it's really strong at controlling fights it can also pump out some really great damage too Make people blow cooldowns just to get to you, then swap to the rapier and blow them up in a blink of an eye. That's going to wrap up the rapier, everyone. Huge shout out to Mike for letting me stab him a bunch of times, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope you guys are ready to stab people with your thin little sword. Alright, love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.